vente, vente, vamos a la casa. I love the physicality of risk. I love the freedom that comes from being in that state of risk. Jeanette Winterson has this quote, what you risk reveals what you value. Joe Kreider is an audacious dancer and choreographer who performs death-defying works in public spaces. It's really exciting to bring dance to audiences who aren't expecting dance to be in their pathway. Um, and it allows for a certain depth, especially if you're doing political work, to bring the dance to the physical place, the site where the issue or um, conflict or whatever it is, is unfolding. In the spring of 2003, after marching in protest against the war in Iraq, Joe was inspired to create a work of public art called How to Be a Citizen. We're going to be looking at um, almost a century of protests down Market Street, um, kind of celebrating the people who have come forward to state what they believe in, and those who have done that have created meaningful change. It just feels important to me, especially having just lived through a fairly significant protest movement, to, to honor that work. You asked me about this book called The Big Strike. That oh, is that the pictorial of history? It. Yeah. It has a lot on it. And Warren Hinkle, he wrote yeah. for the Chronicle? Yeah. Armed with a $3,000 honorarium from the San Francisco Arts Commission, Joe gets the process underway. I want to see if that mic, I know it's awkward to have all this stuff in your face. She and her sound designer, Pamela Z, cool. meet with oral historian Harvey Schwartz to gather elements for the soundtrack. Because everyone marched silently, and all you could hear was the shuffling of the feet. From the labor movement to the anti-war movement to gay and lesbian rights, point, Harvey helps you know, bring the history of protest on Market Street alive for Joe and Pamela Z. Isn't that a great one? I might want that. Well, you know, there are other versions. Of I think it re went really well in that I've just been swirling in so much information on my own. I feel kind of invigorated by that right now, and it helps me move forward and dealing with the city and the planning and the permits and the, all the bureaucratic um, parts that are inherent in this kind of project. Armed with a sense of the street's history, Joe finds a building at the foot of Market Street that seems perfect for the site of the performance. This building was built in the early 1900s. It was one of the tallest buildings on Market Street for quite a while. I, I remember reading that about it. The building has been a witness to an incredible number of protests, and it just, it just kind of makes sense to bring the building as a witness into the process and into the piece. And the original plan was to have dancers standing on these bottom two balconies as well as dancers standing on the top balcony and then have the dancers on the center top balcony be rigged so that they could fly out. I mean, I really wanted flight in, in this piece because flight is freedom. Initially, the owners give Joe permission to use the building. Two weeks later, in the midst of intense protest against the war in Iraq, they renege, forcing her to find an alternative site. Now pressed for time, Joe decides to scale back her high-flying ambitions and puts together plans to stage the performance in an open plaza at the foot of Market Street, using a ramp built to her specifications. Um, it's kind of an unusual project for us in that it's not particularly aerial. We will use the edges of this, the place of the ramp a little bit, but um, it's a very different project in that sense, but we're still looking forward to it. Three months later, Joe's project is still just inching forward, tangled up in red tape. Now City Hall is holding up her contract, which means she may not be able to stage the performance before winter rains begin. So now I have $1,000 left, and I'm not sure yet how I'm going to divvy it up between uh, eight dancers, a composer, and myself. <laughs> public access, public um, presenting, and public funding do present some strings, but they also present, you know, the opportunities that wouldn't exist otherwise. I mean, um, I don't think Joe could have done this process, project if we hadn't commissioned it. So, you know, th there's a trade-off, um, and we try to make it as painless as possible for the um, artists. 
Yes, much better. Okay, um, I'm, I have two thoughts. One is to try this two at a time, and the other is to try something else that we haven't invented yet. <laughs> With help from the San Francisco Arts Commission, Joe's contract gets through the City Hall backlog, and she immediately starts rehearsals. But her grant money still hasn't arrived, so she's only able to pay the dancers $100 for two weeks of work. <laughs> it's a really difficult task, and we're not trying to do a literal translation of the social movements in history. You've got curl over, reach long, slam back, and my hips are up. Where's your left arm? But we're trying to find the physicality that matches certain um, kind of emotional or physical qualities. Cross. And we hold this for a while, right? Yeah, and then and then second down we do slice. the slice. The opening section is called prayer, trying to introduce the idea of protest and, and as a sacred act. And then we're integrating in that section some of the symbols of protest, some of the gestural symbols. That's good. Sorry, I'm doing and watching. Okay. Courtney twice and Kim once. You guys have walking that starts your phrase. Cut the walking. One of the challenges of choosing a busy public plaza as the site for the performance is that Joe can't rehearse there. So in mid-July, the dancers meet every afternoon at Dolores Park, where one of its hills nearly matches the slope of the ramp they'll build for the performance. There's nowhere that I can think of to put a you know, 60-foot ramp for a couple months, and, and that's why we're here. I don't often work on site-specific work not on site, but because we're building the set for an outdoor site, that's kind of what we're having to work with. I feel like we're starting a build to build pretty solid relationships, at least with three of the sections between the history and its content and what's special about its uh, character and the actual movement vocabulary. I think we're, we're doing well. We're getting there. A quarter of Joe's budget has gone into the building of a single set piece, a ramp seven feet high and 74 feet long. In order to get the permit from the city, we had to hire an engineer had to calculate what's called the uplift quotient, which is what is the weight that this has to be in order not to be uplifted during 70 mile an hour winds. And it turns out that 1,100 pounds is the uplift quotient for this particular object in this particular shape. So the sandbags told us. After nine months and hundreds of hours of concentrated labor, Joe and her dancers are finally ready to perform How to Be a Citizen. Each of the six scheduled performances lasts just 20 minutes. The whole initiative for the piece was many bodies making one voice, which is what defines protest, successful protest particularly. And I feel like choreographically we've, we've managed to do that. And um, I think the impact on the audience is just that, that we communicate with eight bodies as one voice and that has a power to it. The whirlwinds of revolt will continue to shake the foundations of our nation until the bright day of justice emerges. We must forever conduct our struggle on the high plane of dignity and discipline. We will not be satisfied. We will not be satisfied. We will not be satisfied until justice rolls down like waters.